All right, the next problem is the letter combinations of a phone number, as you can see on the screen, and we are still evaluating the subset pattern. Here's a problem statement. So we have a string containing digits from two to nine inclusive, and we want to return all possible letter combinations that the number would represent. All possible letter combinations that the number would represent. Okay? Return the answer in any order. Order. <clears throat> the illustration below shows the mapping of digits to letters in a telephone dial pad. Okay. So if you're if I mean even on, on your like smartphone, you can see a two is A B C, three is D E F, four is G H I, five is J K L, and so on. And you can see some examples here. So when we have two and three, these are the possible uh, numbers, uh, letters, letter combinations for 23 that you can get. Um, for 34, this is what you get. For seven, this is what you get. So when you say 1-800-PAYPAL, for example, right, in a number, if someone gave you that number, PayPal, you say P7A2Y9, so 7 two, nine, seven two five right instead of saying seven two nine seven two five you just say uh paypal right and then you would uh get the number of call and it will connect you to paypal that's what a lot of people do so that's what this is about is like getting all the different combinations from any given digit like the different letter combinations you can get from it and this is a lead code medium so buckle up while we get into it for the solution is worth noting and even maybe mentioning in an interview how uh, based on the constraints we have a small band right between zero and four uh, to consider for the number of digits right so that can give you a clue that oh this can be a brute force c type of solution yeah now um, educative has some nice and decent write up here, but I'm going to try and summarize it. And the gist of it is we need, we're going to create a function called letter combinations. And I think I can show that in the code actually. So we have a letter combinations here. Um, and it does a number of things. Let's take this out of the way. It does a number of things. It takes in the digits that we're considering and which takes in a string digits as input and returns a list of all possible combinations and you can see it returns combinations down here the function will perform the below mentioned steps so it first checks if the input string is empty if it's empty we return an empty list immediately so it does that that's what you see here if there is nothing in the list of numbers we're expecting then return an empty list we're done then it creates a hash map which maps each digit to a list of corresponding letters. For example, two corresponds to A, B, C. As you can see here, two corresponds to A, B, C, and so on, All right? Now, it calls this backtrack function to generate combinations recursively. Recursion, that's what makes this a medium. Anything that has recursion is automatically not e an easy. It's automatically not an easy problem. Uh, and so, it generates the combinations recursively. It takes the parameters index, so the current index in the digit string. So the index in this case starting with zero. And the path, that is the current combination of letters being built. That's this, the current combination starts off as an empty uh, array and it's going to be filled with strings, A, B, whatever. And then the digits themselves, that is the original input, as you can see, passed from here. Uh, the mapping, this, this mapping we created, and the combinations that we're going to build uh, using this path that we are working with. So within the function, we'll perform the following steps. Okay, if the length of the path is equal, okay, let's look at look at the backtrack function that has all of these goodies, um, and we're going to do a bunch of things. So if the length of the path is equal to the length of digits, it means we've reached a complete combination. We join it to a string and append it to the combinations list. And that's what you see here. If it's equal to the total uh, length of digits, it's a full combination. So we push that into combinations like so and return. And that's when we backtrack, step back. 
Otherwise, it retrieves the list of possible letters corresponding to the digits at the current index. It then iterates through each letter and performs the following steps. So otherwise, it retrieves the list of possible letters corresponding to the digits at the current index, which we can see are possible letters, right? So we take um, letters, right, as a map. Is it a map? Where is it? Yes, the second to last uh, arguments, right? that's the digits mapping, takes the digit at the current index, so all the list of all possible letters corresponding to digit at the current index, and then iterates through each letter and performs the following steps. So we're going to iterate through pos pos possible letters, as you can see here, and, and we're doing going to do a thing, okay? Uh, add the letter to the path. So we get the letter out of there of possible letters at the current index we're evaluating in this loop put it in the path and call backtrack again with with the updated index and path to move on to the next digit and then we call the same backtrack function we bump the index by one um, we send in the path that we just updated the same digits um, same letters as the digits mapping and the same combinations and when we're done with that we remove it from the path to backtrack and explore other possible combinations so we pop it we take out the last thing from the path and go again that's all there is to it uh, lots of intuition in the problem but uh, something where if you're debugging you can uh, come up with this on your own right if it doesn't uh, work the first time and I think that's all with this problem really and then finally you return return it as a result uh, that combines all possible letter combinations yet at the end so we return combinations at the end we're done here because it's been updated inside backtrack over and over again so key steps you have to pop you always have to pop from the path the current path you're dealing with you always have to increment the index and you always want to um, update the path here I think those are some key bases to look out for, uh, key items to look out for. This and it, it, it has a lot of parallels and similar problems. And I, that is all. And this is a visual representation of what that looks like, right? So the path starts at is A, then D, and so on. I think we kind of explained all of this before, so I'm just I'll just move through it quickly. Time complexity. So uh, time complexity is k to the n power times n. Uh, since there are k to the n possible combinations for every digit. So for time complexity, uh, number of input digits is n, and k is the maximum letter of letter number of letters associated with any digits in our mapping. So generating it to be k to the n times n. Um, well, because you have to generate whatever you're generating has to be four, you know, not four, like n digits in length, n, n characters in length, and each of those characters has um, a k. So let's say two has three possibilities a, b, c to the power n combinations. Uh, each <clears throat> one of the weirder time complexities but this intuitively kind of makes sense um, and again uh, it's like kind of a fuzzy 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 mathematic thing this uh, time complexity so I feel like this is more intuitive to imagine because for every character so a, this ABC right at the end of the day we're gonna have um, at least three to the power two, right? Uh, combinations, at least nine combinations, one to three, one to three, one to three, yeah. So that's where the K to the N comes from, right? So K is, there are three pos possible characters and N is the number of inputs here. So one, two, so three to the power two uh, in worst case. Um, so that's where the K to the N comes from. And we have to do this like, that number of times so 
the number of digits times in the worst worst case. Um, so I guess it kind of makes sense in that in that regard. Um, and then for space complexity, we have n times k. Uh, still a normal of the digits. And it's the real number of input digits actually, k is the maximum letters is mapped by any digits. And the recursive solution takes up space on the call stack. Mm, n times k evaluates to n at the end of the day. Uh, n kind of wins out. Uh, n is the maximum depth of the stack, corresponds to the number of input digits at each level of the stack. So a list of up to k characters that is maintained. And I'm mumbling right now, so I'm just going to end the video here. Uh, o of n times k. Kind of makes sense. Kind of hard to intuit, but there you have it. Ciao.